Hi guys, hello, welcome back. I thought, hope you had a great half term. We didn't do anything, any cooking last week, but we are back this week and we're gonna make an absolute banger of a curry, a lamb keema, one of my absolute favorites from our childhood. My old man used to make this every single week for us, pretty much. Uh, it's a really simple, quick, easy dish, packs loads and loads of flavor, really easy to do. And I'm also gonna show you how to make some naan bread as well to go with it, which is also really easy. Right. So first thing we're going to do is <clears throat> going to get a pan on, okay? So you want it, oh, your pan on to be sort of a medium heat, you know? Um, so just get it kind of ticking over. Now, I'm going to start off with, I've got 500 grams of lamb mince here. <coughs> Excuse me. Lamb mince is generally quite fatty. Um, so I don't actually put any fat in the pan at all because it's going to leak some of that fat out. So I'm just going to open the packet, okay? And just... Make sure there's no bit of paper on the bottom. And then just break that down into my pan. Okay, and almost immediately, you can hear that starting to sizzle. If you just keep it moving around, you might get a few bits sticking to it initially, but the fat will let that loosen up. And as it crisps up, it kind of develops flavor. It's really, really tasty. So get your mince on. Whilst that's going, you need to take either small, two small onions, or I've just got one big one here. Okay, we're just gonna chop that into uh, kind of um, some fairly small diced pieces. Uh, this is all, all, this dish is kind of, it's gonna end up looking a bit like sort of just mince really with peas through it, but there's loads and loads of flavor. So you don't want massive pieces of um, onion knocking around because obviously, you know, if you have some mince, the mince is quite fine. So again, you want the onion to be quite fine as well. So I'm just gonna take that onion and slice it, just take that last, last bit of paper off there. Okay, so I've left the bottom on, as you can see, taking the top off. Now I'm just gonna run the knife along that way. Two, three, four, and they're probably about half centimeter wide, these um, incisions that I'm making there. And then just gonna go straight across, and then that, of course, will just fall down into our pieces. Okay, and then you just throw away, I'm just gonna cut away that last bit, Throw away the root end and then repeat with the other half. So straight along, if you can see the camera angle, the camera angle there, I'm going to go all the way along the onion. Because of the layers, the onion just falls apart, you see. So you only have to shot, slice long ways, not slice it all the, end, all the way to the end so that you can hold it all together. And then slice across and then it all falls together into these little mouth sized pieces. So I can see that my lamb is starting to brown, so I'm just going to start working that round with a fork. Okay, get that moving. To start with, it will sweat. You'll see steam coming up and bubbles, and that's some of the fat coming out. I'm oh, sorry, some of the liquid coming out. But once the liquid evaporates and just the fat's left, you'll then start to see it browning off. So I've just loosened all of that lamb mince off the bottom of the pan. So now in goes my onion. Okay. Great stuff. And at this point, if you've got cumin seeds, then there it's a good time to put the cumin seeds in because they take a little while to release their flavours. Really sort of pungent, kind of like fragrant spices cumin. It's amazing, but don't use too much. So a teaspoon of cumin seeds can go in at this stage. Leave the dry spices out for a little while. So if you've got powdered cumin, leave it out. If you're using cumin seeds, now's the time for it to go in. Okay. They also, as always, we want those onions to break down. So we're going to put in a pinch of salt because that draws the moisture out of those onions and allows the frying to take place and to reduce and that's where we get our flavour. Alright, so pinch of salt in there. I think I did two pinches of salt. I like my salt. Terrible, but this is good healthy cooking otherwise. So, you know, if you're going to go and buy stuff pre-made from the shops, it's often got loads and loads of salt already in it. So don't be afraid of making your food tasty with a bit of salt, you know. Okay, so we're just going to keep cooking that down. Whilst we're waiting for that to cook down, we're going to add in a couple of bits of onion, sorry, garlic. So we're going to go for three cloves, get rid of the rest over there. Okay, so just take the side of your knife, put the cloves underneath and pop it. So that does two things. Pop. Firstly, crushing garlic means that it releases some of the flavours, bruising it makes the flavour come out of the garlic. 
And secondly, it makes peeling it super easy because once you've crushed it, the peel literally just falls off. So people spend ages trying to peel garlic, there's absolutely no need. Just bash it with the side of your knife, job done. Right, okay, so we've got three cloves of garlic there. So now we're going to use the seesaw method. So hold your knife like this, other hand on top. The knife doesn't leave the board, okay? And just rock it backwards and forwards over that garlic until it's chopped into pieces. Then you scrape everything back together into a little pile and go again until it's nice and fine. You don't want big chunks of garlic in your chemo. It's going to be nasty. So take a little bit of time, go backwards and forwards nice and slowly, like that. Until it's all small, which is pretty much, I mean it doesn't have to be minute, but like you don't want massive chunks. Okay, so that's good, that can go in. All right, looking good. Right now this meat is starting to brown off. So I'm going to turn up the heat a little bit, now that the onion and the garlic's in there. What we're going to do now is start to add in, whilst there's still some fat dancing around in there, and it is dancing around, we're going to go in with a teaspoon of coriander, okay, dry coriander. So I'm just tipping it in because I kind of know what a teaspoon is. I reckon you're probably better off using a teaspoon because you can always add more, you can't take it out, so if you end up pouring loads in, you'll be in trouble. Right, chilli powder is up to everyone's preference, so I like it medium hot, so I'm going to go for about a teaspoon of chilli powder. Okay. And then we have, oh yeah, turmeric. Okay, so a good teaspoon of turmeric. This is a really deep, big pot of turmeric, so I'm going to use a spoon for that. So a heap teaspoon of turmeric in there. Lovely job. All right, and just work those spices in. So you'll see the turmeric completely changes the colour of everything. It makes everything kind of go a bit yellowy and a bit kind of uh, looking more like a curry. All right, so just keep working that around. Okay, then the next bit, once that, that is kind of cooked out, oh we need to, yeah, well actually we'll taste the salt at the end. So there's only, cut, there's only two more ingredients, this is really, really simple, okay. The next thing we're going to do is add in some peas, now you can use frozen peas or you can use tin peas, but try not to use hot peas, okay, because what we're going to do is use these peas to cool this down for a second, right, and then once the peas go in, you're going to then follow up with some natural yoghurt. Now if you put natural yoghurt into that while it's smoking hot, like it is right now, all you're going to do is split the yoghurt, it curdles, because it doesn't like the heat. So you need to put it in when the pan is quite cool. So first I'm going to turn this down, there we go. Secondly, peas are going to go in, now these are frozen ones, so they really are going to reduce the temperature of this dish, okay. And then whilst it's cool, I'm going to go in with about half, so about 250, well maybe just about 200 mils of the yoghurt. Keep hold of this, you're going to need the whole tub, 500 tub, gram tub, because we've got two more uses for this yet. But we're going to go for, so you'll see, almost half, not quite half, of the tub. In. Alright? And then just slowly work that into the chemo. Okay? It's going to be absolutely awesome. This is such a delicious dish. If you haven't tried it before, I'm going to blow your family's minds. Okay, just cooking that in. So that just needs a couple of minutes now on a low heat to cook off the yoghurt. Okay, so just let that tick. So whilst it's ticking, keep an eye on it. We're going to set up, well not set up, we're going to make naan breads, right? So, 500 grams of bread flour. Now, that's a 1.5 kilo bag, so I know it's roughly a third of the bag, 500 grams. So I'm not going to weigh it, I'm just going to pinch about a third way down the bag, bearing in mind that that's like air in that bit. So about a third of the way down, and then just pour in. Okay, and then you've got two thirds left. I'm going to use bread again next week, so if you've had this delivered, make sure you don't use it up in the week because you're going to need some bread next week and I'm not delivering it twice. Alright, put that to one side. Okay, next thing is a pinch of salt. Okay, so go in, good pinch of salt. Okay, if you like, and I like, I do like, put some cumin seeds into your naan bread. You don't have to, but a teaspoon of cumin seeds is a great little addition. 
Then we're going to go in with another third, two thirds of your tub of yogurt, so probably two big spoons. You need to save enough in the bottom of there to make a dip at the end, all right? So, and if you should really mix it up before you put it all in, like, unlike I have, because I've got really runny stuff at the bottom and the hard stuff is at the top. Okay, that's all right. So I've got a third of the pot of yogurt left. All right, leave it in the pot as well because it's easier to mix your spices in there than it is in a bowl. And it stays on washing up. All right, so the yogurt's gone in. Okay, now we're just going to go in with a teaspoon of baking powder. Okay, in there. That's going to help to make it rise up. Okay, and then, I'm going to use this spoon actually. I'm just going to, with a spoon, work all that together. Now, the yogurt will make this quite soft, all right? So what we do is we mix the yogurt in first, and you'll sort of see that the, if I try and show you, it starts to come together into kind of lumps. Yeah, you'll get a lumpy, floury mix like this, okay? Which is fine. So once that yogurt's kind of stirred through, we then, bit by bit, gonna add a splash of water. So a tiny bit, mix, Okay, and once it feels like it's could almost start to come together to a dough, you're going to have to get our hands in there, all right? So that's still quite loose, so I'm going to go for another splash of water. Okay, if you do put too much water in, just add a bit of flour, it's not going to hurt, okay, and it will bring it back. But what we want is, so I'm going to go for one more splash, that's about half a half pint cup of water I've got in there so far. Okay, so that is coming together now, so I'm going to get my hands in there, because you can't actually feel what the dough is like with a spoon. So you need to get your hands in there and just slowly start to pull the dough together. And it is, you know what, I've forgotten my rolling pin. I always forget something. I thought, you know what, this week, maybe I haven't forgotten anything, but no, I have. And it's my rolling pin. Never mind. All right. So I'm just working this dough, as you can see, into the bottom of the pan, trying to mop up any last bits of flour. But that feels pretty solid, it's decent, all right, that is sounding awesome, I think we can take that off in a minute, okay, so, now I'm going to take, sorry, the bread, the dough all together, feels a bit soft, I'm going to put some flour down on your surface, okay, and a bit on your hands, and then I'm just going to knead that for a few minutes, okay, you really need to do this, it stretches, all the gluten in the flour, and it means that you'll get a really super nice, light, fluffy naan bread, okay? So I'm just gonna keep working that on the table. Make sure you keep stirring this, don't let it burn to the bottom of the pan, okay? And as you brought the heat back up now, that yogurt won't split, okay? Because it's already incorporated. If you put it in, shock it, put it into a really hot pan straight away, it just curdles and goes nasty, but I can bring it up as high as I like now and it won't split because it's come up, the heat's come up slowly. That's the key. Right, so the keema is looking good. Right, so now we're just going to go work that a little bit. Keep working it. Oh, I'll just roll up a bit of uh, onion in there, don't do that. Okay, just a couple of minutes. I'm doing this in real time to give you an idea of how long you need to do it. But basically, you should be using the palm of your hand to press the dough into the table, okay? So you're stretching it, you're trying to push it. Imagine you're almost trying to push it through the table. And if it's getting a bit sticky like that, just add a bit more flour, it's not gonna hurt it. Sticky dough is better than really, really dry dough because it's gonna end up with a really nice, fluffy um, naan bread. If your dough is really stiff and kind of getting creases in it because it's so dry, that's how your bread's going to turn out. So don't worry about it working it if it's a little bit wet. It's just starting to come together now. You'll feel it almost changes. Okay, so I'm just rolling it against the table, using the palm of my hand, working it and working it and working it, like so. Right, one more little hit of the flour. It's quite a sticky one, this, but it's going to make really good naan bread. Okay, let's... Right, so this now, for me, is done. So what I'm gonna do is just bring it off the heat to rest, because it doesn't need to cook anymore, it's not gonna benefit from cooking anymore. The peas start to go a little bit wrinkly if you cook it for too long, okay? 
that's a really quick curry, right? I'm just going to taste it. See if it need any salt. Mm, it does. To do that, taste it. You've got to add some salt. If you do, add a bit of salt. Try again. Okay? If I'd added it all at the start, I wouldn't be able to take it out if it was too salty. It's always good to add a bit at the end of any dish you're making. But make sure you taste stuff before you serve it. Amazing. That's much better. Right, I'm going to turn it off for a sec to dim it in. Okay, the keema's off. Naan breads are nearly sorted. Very nearly. I've got a bit more onion in my naan bread dough. It's no good. Okay, work that on the table. Right, I, I think that dough is done. So that can sit to one side. Okay, finally, before we start pulling, in fact, I'm going to go and wash my hands. I'll be back. Okay, we're back. Clean my hands, got my rolling pin. Right, so what we're going to do before we do anything else is just going to make a little bit of a uh, dip. Okay, so I've got some coriander, fresh coriander here, and also some fresh mint. And with the same method, let me just move this out of the way so you can see what's going on. The same method that we used for chopping the um, garlic, the seesaw method, we're going to do the same. So I've kind of bunched all of that up together, okay, so it's really kind of tight and like held. So I'm just going to slowly chop that into bits, right? So first of all, so once it's chopped down once, you can then use the seesaw method, which is this. So we're just going to go like that. Okay, and keep chopping it, make sure you get no bits in there, keep chopping it up, go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, get this mint and coriander chopped up really nice, okay, really nice and fine, it's going to go into a sauce, okay, I'm going to save half of that to garnish the curry with, the keema. Put half of that there, and then the other half I'm going to put straight into this part of yogurt, this whatever's left in this yogurt. All right, so that's going to go in along with I'm going to put a little bit of chili powder in mine because it's banging. Okay, and then a squeeze of half a lemon as well. So just squeeze that in there, okay, and then just mix that all up. Okay, and you've got a little minty yogurty dip like you get at the Indian, which we're going to just finish the dish with at the end. Again, I'm just going to have a little taste. Doesn't matter about me using my mouth because we're all family here. Mmm, good. You can put a bit of honey in that if you wanted to, make it a bit sweeter. I like it like that. I'm watching the waistline. So, dip's made. Right, okay. So, we've also got half of that... Um, coriander and mint left to dress the keema at the end. That's looking and smelling incredible. All right, so now we've just got to make the naan breads. I'm just going to clear that space. So finally, I'm going to just grab a little bit more flour onto the table. Put my heat on, so you need to get another frying pan now, or another pan, a dry pan, no oil. Okay, you want it on a fairly medium to high heat. Okay, now what you're going to do is take your dough and you're going to twist off a ball around about the size of a tennis ball, like that, okay? Make it into a ball in your hand. If you start with something that's circular, like that, you're more likely to end up with a round naan bread. If you start with something that looks like, I don't know, a double-decker bus, it's going to end up coming out looking like a double-decker bus when you roll it. So, ball, okay? Put it onto your floured surface, pat it down with your hands. Pat it there. This is a nice soft dough, so you just be gentle with it, okay? Plenty of flour on the board, on the table. Okay, then we're going to use a rolling pin just to stretch it out a bit further. Now, we've put that baking powder in here for a reason. So you don't, you know naan breads are quite thick. They're about that thick when they're finished, yeah? But that's because they've risen. So you need to roll it out thinner than you want it to be in the end because it's going to rise up. If you start with it as thick as a naan bread, you're going to end up with like a loaf of bread in that pan. And it ain't going to cook very well in the middle. Okay, so nice and thin, so it should be about the size of the frying pan itself, right? So that's lovely, that's perfect. 
Right, so this, I can see the smoke coming off it. So what we're going to do now is just gently and quickly pick up, the, pick up the naan bread and drop it straight into that pan, right? And don't move it. And what we're going to do is watch this, okay? I'm going to bring the camera over for you to see and it's going to bubble up, right? And when it bubbles up, that's time to flip it over. And I'll show you. I'm going to grab the camera. So, you'll already see these bubbles starting to emerge. Take a few minutes to properly get going. Okay, so you can you see those bubbles coming? We're getting a little bit of smoke here, so I'm going to investigate underneath. Oh, smells. There we go. Look at that. That actually looks like a naan bread, right? Okay, and there's a couple of seconds on the other side, and it'll be done. I'm going to have to turn this down a little bit, I think. Mine. So if it starts to smoke too much, just turn it down. It doesn't matter if you get those scorch marks though, because that is very genuine, and when you cook these in a tandoor, you get scorch marks on them too. All right, so that is ready. Now, if you're very brave, you can just grab it and take it out. So I'm going to quickly grab it and chuck it onto the board. There we go. We have a hat and arm bread. Right, and guys, here we are. So we've got the keema there. So what it should look like. You want to add in those bits of herbs that we had left. So that's the mint and the coriander. Just work that through right at the end. Okay. Now, what we're going to do, what I like to do, you can put this all on a plate and eat it separately, but I like to get, I've got boiled some rice, I didn't really film that because I didn't think it was that interesting for you to watch. We're going to put some rice down. So you use the naan bread as like a, a plate, yeah? So you put some rice down and then we go in with some keema in the middle like that. Maybe a little bit more for luck. Bit of a mess. Pull it into the middle. There we go. Happy days. And then we've got our yogurt that we made. This might not look very glamorous now. You can put it all into tubs, tubs if you like. I'm just going to pour the yogurt over the middle. Like so. And then basically you can pick that up like a kebab and smash it. Absolutely awesome. Right guys, so there we have it. The lamb keema kebab. A full curry in a bread. Amazing. Have a go, get it down here. Send us your pictures, I wanna see your efforts. Uh, and I'll see you next week, enjoy.